We've been speaking on brokenness, but today I want to touch on a subject that's probably the ultimate sign of brokenness or the ultimate, I don't know, maybe reaction or outcome of brokenness. So today I want to talk about suicide. Okay. Have any of you had any friends that have committed suicide? No. Do any of you know anyone that? I have. You have what? <clears throat> we have a friend that suicide. Like a friend, friend, like good one. Really? Yeah. Huh. Anyone else? Anyone else at school know someone that committed suicide? Wow. Interesting. Okay. All right. Let's see. Just questions. How many of you think? What's the age that's more prevalent to commit suicide? Mm. What do you think? Is there a specific a range? Or a What's a range? Give me a range. What do you think? 15 to 25. 15 to 25. Anyone else? 13 to 17. 13 to 17. Okay. My, uh, Steve, what do you think? 13 to 25. Okay. okay. Do you guys think males or females are more likely to commit suicide? Males. Males? <coughs> okay. Why males? Uh, they, they have the will to do it. They go 100%. <laughs> <laughs> what about race-wise? What do you think? White, white. White? white. white? Really? Why white? Why white? Why'd you say white? Yes, you, you, yes, yes. I don't know. I feel like... I feel race is saying this, but I feel like Mexican people go to drugs, black people will go to violence, and white people will just go to, I want to die. <laughs> oh, that's racist. Yeah. That is racist. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody think you know maybe why race, why people commit suicide? What do you think it's, one, give me a reason. Can you give me a reason why you think people commit suicide? That people what? Commit suicide. Well, I would say because they hit rock bottom and they don't see, like, the way up. Okay. They feel like their life, that's, they can't go any further. Okay. Marilyn? Why white people? No, why people. <laughs> <laughs> um, why they commit suicide? I feel like they might, they feel like they're ending it, like they don't have to suffer anymore. That's, like, the way out. They don't have to <laughs> Do you guys think you can always tell when someone's going to commit suicide? You think it's always obvious? Mm -hmm. no. no. No? Okay. All right, what about, um, it's, it's not obvious, right? Maybe. We'll, we'll look at that, if it's obvious or not. <clears throat> um, do any of you think there's something you can do to prevent it? There's always something to do. Okay. All right. What about Christians? Do Christians commit suicide? How many of you believe what, what the Catholic Church says? How many of you believe that suicide is the unforgivable sin? Or how many of you have been raised to believe? Or how many, how many of you? Rob is the only one? Okay. How many of you, so do you guys, do you believe it's an unforgivable sin? Raised. Huh? Raised. Raised that way. I believe do you? it. Do you go to hell? Do you, I think so. you think it's unforgivable? Unforgivable. You believe it's unforgivable? Yeah. Anybody else believe it's it's unforgivable sin? Okay, good. Does any anybody believe differently that it's it is forgivable? Not sure. Well, okay. the way you phrase it is different. Okay, I so it's a forgivable sin. Okay, uh, let me put it to you in this way, right? If, if we have a sin meter, right, <clears throat> from one to ten. Okay, yeah, let's just pretend. Okay. <laughs> Where does suicide lie on 1 to 10? 10. 10. Okay. Anyone agree with Marilyn? Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4. I think killing somebody else would be a 10. I think all sins are 10. <laughs> I think all sins are 10. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I, I know. I'm just, I'm just trying to see where... You know, cause I, no, because I know where you're coming from. I know what it's like. <laughs> is it a forgivable sin? Yes, it is forgivable. Can he be forgiven? No, because he can't. Because he's 
he can't repent. Yeah. All right. Well, and we're gonna see that stuff. Okay, which is it's a good point. All right, but and, and I and I yes, uh, we'll talk about that. Josh kind of got ahead of me there. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> the lesson's <laughs> over. It's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> <laughs> over. You guys should go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So here, let me give you some facts. Okay, major reasons why people commit suicide. Okay, one mental mental illness. Mental illness causes ninety percent of of people that commit. It's ninety percent of people that commit suicide. The only issue with that is that depression has been by the medical society has been has been labeled as a mental illness okay, so that's the problem that depression itself has been labeled as a mental illness the issue with that is that now because of depression or because it's been labeled that it can be treated with drugs or it's usually the first thing that people um, get in, in treatment is drugs that's the first one so we'll look at that for a little bit bipolar disease does anybody know what bipolar means yeah okay um schizophrenic does anybody know what that is? Does anybody know? Does not know what that is? <coughs> what? No. So schizophrenic is it's delusions. You hear voices. You hear people. You see people. Oh no! Bipolar is the multiple. Yeah, I had. I was. I I did a I did an internship at a St. Mary's um, mental clinic in D.C. and I got to work with an individual who was who was. Mm, multi personality schizophrenic disorder. disorder. I mean, he was all over the place. I mean, he and I asked him, so what is it that you see? And he said, I see Jesus. So Jesus came and talked to him, and so did his mother. I mean, it was it was a lot, it was it was interesting. So schizophrenia is definitely one of them. Delusions, people that they see, people that they think are talking to them or telling them what to do. Okay, anxiety. The environment, meaning the environment that you were raising or the environment that you're growing up in, social cultureness, which means in the way that you feel around your culture, the way that you feel in your environment, is so most of the reasons for most of the reasons for depression and suicide are loneliness. <clears throat> so people who tend to be lonely or feel lonely. It doesn't mean that there that there's no one around them. They can be surrounded by people, but inside they feel lonely. Like, there's no connection with anyone. That's the issue. And, of course, lately, another one that's contributed to it, um, bullying is one of them, abuse, substance abuse, family history, or being exposed to it. Someone who has a parent or an uncle or some sort of family member who has committed suicide will sometimes, in a state of depression, see that as, see that as an alternative to the solution of what they're going through. So being exposed to, to, to somebody committing suicide, especially someone who is a family member, kind of puts it in you that that could be an option when things are not going well. So that's, that's a factor as well. Okay. The age group at risk. Believe it or not, the age group at risk is predominantly 35 to 54. By white and Native Americans. And out of this group, males are most likely to commit suicide than females. Okay? The people who are less likely to commit suicide, least likely, are Hispanic and black females. The least likely to commit suicide. Okay. Now, why do we look at this? Why is it 35 to 54? And even within this, between 35 to 45, it's, I think it's around the 26%, and I think this one's around 30-something percent, if, if, I'm not, if I remember correctly. Okay, so why do you think this particular group is the worst one? <clears throat> White males in their 30s. Why do you think it is? Midlife crisis. Midlife crisis, okay. Uh, they're not at the spot that they thought they were going to be at. So if we look at it, right, if we look at it from a culture perspective in, 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 in white males, right, white males are raised to be educated, to go to school, to be at a certain partner life. They are viewed to have a future. They have to have a plan. 
So what happens when at 35, 40, they're not where they're ideally supposed to be? They get depressed. Okay. Here's what's really interesting. I was I was talking. I was I was sitting with a, an individual who who needed counseling, and he was he was a white person. He was he was 20, 27, 28. And as I'm talking to him, he's going through a hard time. He's having a real difficult time. And I ask, and I and I, as I'm asking him questions, and as I'm trying to figure him out, it's the first time in his life where he's going through a very difficult time in which he doesn't know what to do. It was the first time in his life. So the problem that he had was that he never had problems. Do you imagine that? Like the biggest problem that he had is that he never had a difficult moment in his life. Like his parents provided everything, his parents gave him what he needed. You know, he kind of he was a good student, so he never really had any major issues. So one of the biggest issues he had is that he never had issues. So he actually didn't know how to deal with his issues. So he was going to a very depressive state, and which he was doing things that he shouldn't be doing. And the reason he was going through it is because he was depressed because he didn't know how to handle problems because he's never had problems. Now, what kind of problems do Hispanic and black females go through in, 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 in our society? What kind of problems? Or us as Hispanics. How do, how, do we have problems? Lots. Heck yeah. <laughs> right? We're raised in problems. We know we, I mean, especially our parents who came to this country who didn't speak the language, uh, who had to like work in a certain place, who had to live in certain places in a certain level of economy. I mean, it, it all, you're, we're kind of drenched in problems and we know how to deal with problems. So we constantly live trying to resolve the issues that we have. So that's why it's less likely for Hispanics in general and black men, blacks in general to commit suicide. But when we look at like the predominantly white and Native Americans, specifically white, they are not where they thought they were going to be. Specifically the males because of what is expected of the males or where they're supposed to be. They feel hopeless. They feel trapped. They feel alone. They're looking for a way out. That's why they drink. That's why they they, they go to different countries and do things that they're not supposed to do, trying to find a way or trying to find something to fulfill whatever void it is that they have. That's, that's um, suicide today. Okay, predominantly this is what it is. This is, this, is where, this is what it looks like. It is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. It's the 10th. Amongst teenagers... It's the number one. It's the first leading cause of death amongst teenagers between the age of 17 and 23. So about the age group you guys are about to deal with tonight. Right? Any questions up to this point? Make sense? Can I also say it's when uh, they get to a certain age and lose everything. And they say that they can't. It took them this long to build what they had. They don't know how to come back yeah. from it. Yeah, they don't know how to come back. Um, males are most likely to use firearms, while women are more likely to use firearms and poisoning. Males actually, fifty, I think it's 52% use firearms to commit it. Women, it's like, it's, uh, it's between 25 to 26%, 25% firearms and 26% uh, take poison. Right? And in a sense, yes, kind of what Josh was saying is kind of true. Males use use firearms because it does the job. Like it just it gets it done, right? So, um, San Francisco Bridge has um, has recorded approximately two thousand deaths. The people that have jumped since the bridge opened. Okay, um, China. There's there's a, there's a forest called Suicide Forest in China where Chinese people go. And they commit suicide. Um, it's, it's one of the biggest places where they go and they commit suicide. They hang themselves. Um, I mean, it's, it's all over the place. The countries with Korea is one of the worst places, and Japan is one of the worst places. There's a place called There's a place called Guam. Uh, I'm sorry, Guyana, who is probably one of the worst places in people where people commit suicide. 
it's 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 I mean it's an epidemic. It's bad. Like it's it's really bad. Even within 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 our country, within the states, there's there's it's predominant. I think 2015 had 40,000 deaths just in suicide alone. That's the first time we hit that mark, and it's increasing by a rate of like 15 percent. So it's a problem. It's an issue, right? I mean, it's it's a complete issue. Like it, it's it's something that's it's, it's wrong. It, it's happening. Um, so. It's not something that we can ignore. Now, if I, I ask you the question, do you think we can always tell what's happening? Do you think you can tell when someone's... Can you tell when someone's depressed? No. It's, it's, it's almost like a 50-50, okay? Like, you can and you can't. Sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. There's certain things that, that, that um, give it away and that, that tell us when someone is depressed, okay? So the, the major question here is, or one of the two questions I want to ask, is the first one is, is um, it's the Christian question, right? It's, it's, first of all, do Christians commit suicide? Or can Christians commit suicide? But what happens when Christians commit suicide? But at suicide, like, what is it that is lost? Hope. Hope. And what, is, what does that mean, exactly? What does that mean? What is hope? Dave, what's hope? What's hope? To look forward oh, yeah, to something? That's what I was going to say. Like something you look forward to? Okay. A life raft. Forward to. Okay, we're, something we look forward to. Josh said a life raft. Anyone else? Before I start picking people. <laughs> Elmer, what is hope? What is it? What's hope? What does the word hope mean? <clears throat> David, what's hope? What is it? We use it in a sentence, right? But what does it mean? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> A feeling of trust. Is that, is that the biblical? Is that the uh, Webster's definition of it? One second, JC is looking it I'm not sure if it's exactly hope, but uh, Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of no, hope. No, that's faith. <laughs> that's hope for. Yeah, you can't use a definition and use the word. So that's what hope is. <laughs> so hope. <laughs> like, and for some reason, my, my definition is, 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 is in Spanish, but hope. is to trust in something even if it's not tangible. And, and let me explain this, okay? So if I hope, like obviously we can use it like the, the, the problem, right? I, my hope is in Jesus. But what does that mean? What does it mean that your hope is in Jesus? My faith is in Jesus. Right. Right. <laughs> Yes, it is, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the last thing to go when you're going through a problem? What do you think it's the last thing to go? Every time you're going through an issue, every time you're going through a hardship, you always hope or you always have faith, which is what, kind of what JC was saying. There's always hope that it's going to get better. But what is the hope in? What is that hope in? At least for us, we can say that our hope, and we hope to God, or we pray to God, or we have faith in God, that these things are going to get better. 
right? So if you're going through a hardship, if you're going through a hard time, if you're going through a difficult time, at least there's some sort of hope. There's some sort of trust. There's some sort of something that indicates or some feeling that something is going to get better. For what reason, I don't know. But, but for us, it's because our hope and our trust is that God is going to see me through it and things are going to get better. But what happens if there's no God? So if, if, if you're dying, if you're in your deathbed, right? If you're, you're literally like in your bed and you're about to die and the next time you close your eyes, that's it. You're gone. Think about it, okay? That you're in your deathbed and you close your eyes to die and when you open them, it's the next life. You and I, at least me, when I'm going to close my, my eyes to die, there's a hope, there's a faith that there's something coming. What about those that have no hope? What about those that there is nothing? So where does their hope lie? Where is it? So if someone's going through a hard time, if someone's going through a difficult time, and you lose hope, what do you lose? everything there is no solution there is no better outcome there is nothing better this is never going to get better this is never gonna resolve itself there is nothing after this this is all it is from now on so when you lose hope when you lose this when you lose hope you technically just lost everything that gives you the idea or the confidence that something is going to be something better is coming so in suicide the thing that is lost the thing that is going away the thing that is gone and the thing that is of such importance is hope. There's no more hope. There is no reason to believe that my situation is going to get better. What do you think that does to a person? Like if I told you, listen, your your current situation right now, there's no hope for it. Or a doctor comes and he gives a diagnosis for a disease and says, there's no hope for you. You're going to die. What does that mean? That's it. It's over for you. You're, you're going. Like, it. just get your things in order. So what, what does the Bible say about it, right? What does the Bible say about about suicide what does the bible say about hope or what do we do to help people who have no hope well the message of the gospel or the message of everything is that we as christians the very thing that we offer to the world and the very thing that we offer everyone is the exact same thing that the world is actually losing hope <clears throat> Hope that there is something better. Hope that there is a better life. Hope that there is someone out there, there is something out there who loves me, who, who, who has their eye on me, who has a reason for me to live, that has something for me. That's exactly what we as Christians offer. This is what you and I have. We have hope, not in ourselves, but in something that is bigger than us, something that is greater than us. So we offer hope. So then what happens then to the individual or the Christian who commits suicide? What can we say about that Christian? Was he really a Christian? I think that's the question I ask, isn't it? It's a no. And I think that's the that's that's the one that's the very idea that I fight with, right? That's the, the, that's the very idea that I struggle with. Can a Christian commit suicide? Man. And, and see, and if we, we use the logic of it, if a Christian commits suicide, then what that's telling me that in suicide, what that Christian lost is hope. 
So if the Christian lost hope and he committed suicide, then therefore what he lost is the trust in something or someone that is greater than themselves, that something better is coming. Right? So what's the difference between that and a lack of faith? What's the difference? Is there a difference? Yeah. What's the difference? You're taking action on your own hands when it's not your call. Okay. When unbelief is something that happens to everybody at times and it can be resolved and you can fight through it. But once you kill yourself, you're done. That's it. Okay. You make a final decision where it's not yours to make. Okay. Anyone else? What's the difference? What's the difference between unbelief and suicide? And suicide in the sense of, of losing hope. Is unbelief a type of losing hope? Yes? No? Give me? Yeah. I think it's more of a what are they believing in or who are they believing in and that has failed them and that's why they're committing suicide and, the and, and, and I like the argument right and I, because it's it's the part that I struggle with how many of you here have ever felt okay be honest it's, like, it, it, it's an honest thing right have ever you felt that God has actually let you down yeah we all have we all have right you wanted something you asked for, like, or the situation didn't go according to the way that you wanted it to go or the way that you thought it should have gone. And, and maybe, like, because of our unbelief or because of our misunderstanding, we shake our fist at heaven and we're angry with God. Right? There's a, there's a thin line, right? And there is, there's a thin line, um, and I don't want to completely say that these are exactly the same thing. They're not, but there is some similarities between these. If my disbelief in God, or like I don't completely trust God in everything, or I haven't completely given everything to Him, then really what I'm saying is I really don't have faith, or I really don't have hope that you can change all these things in my life. I only have hope that you can change certain things. The individual who commits suicide doesn't have hope in anything anymore, like nothing like, there is no hope in nothing ever again. An individual who jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge managed to survive the fall. He said, it's one in, I don't know how many, that actually survived that fall. And now he goes around and he's a motivational speaker. And the one thing he says, uh, as I was listening to him, he says... The moment that my hand left that rail, I regretted it. Think about that. Which speaks to what you were saying. That the moment he let go of that rail to kill himself, he regretted it. That's tough. Because on the way down, he regretted his decision. But not everyone gets to live. So then what? Is it forgivable? <laughs> it takes four to five seconds to land on the water. Four to five seconds of regret. Is it forgivable? Is that repentable? Is that repentance? Or? Wait, wait. That's a, it's a good way to put it. I don't think so. I don't think in his head it's like the first thing that pops up, forgive me, Lord. I don't think so. I think the panic and all that, the emotions going on, the last thing is, oh my God, forgive me. Yeah. When we decide to take our own lives, what we're doing is, is a couple of things. So, Job 121 says that God is the giver of life. He's the giver and the taker of life. Um, we, Exodus 20 says, thou shalt not kill, that includes yourself, so 
the Bible doesn't necessarily talk about suicide as a subject, but there are suicidal people who have committed suicide in the Bible. Okay, there's seven instances. King Saul was one of them, one of the most famous ones, and Judas was the other one that was probably one of the most well-known people who actually committed suicide. And it's interesting because Jesus in, in, in Matthew, I think it's 27, where he says, let the children come to me. And then he says, if any of you cause these kids to sin, you, should, you might as well tie a rope around your neck. Or he says, grab, tie a rock around you and throw yourself in the water. What's he saying? If you cause these kids to, to, to commit suicide, kill yourself. <laughs> Jesus is saying this, right? He's saying, if you do this to one of these children, go kill yourself. Really, that's what he's saying. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus is saying it's okay to kill yourself if you do this. I'm not saying that. But ultimately, what we're saying, what Jesus is saying, like, if you cause one of these children to sin, there's no hope for you. There's nothing left for you because of what you caused these children to do. Now, in the Catholic Church, the belief is that sin is the ultimate suicide, the most unforgivable suicide. What does the Bible say about the unforgivable suicide? Unforgivable sin. What does the Bible say? You shall not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. It is the only forgivable, unforgivable sin. Uh, and unfortunate, and not unfortunate. I don't know why it is, but suicide is one of those things that the Bible does not clearly talk about. But the Bible does say that the only unforgivable sin, the only sin that is unforgivable, is one: blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Which brings us to the other point, right? We're going to run out of time. Uh, well, the problem is that when I commit other sins, I have the opportunity to repent and to ask for forgiveness. And you don't have that opportunity when you commit suicide. Go ahead. Well, just like that instance where that guy survived, I think if God wills it that he live and he chooses to be what he's doing right now, I think that's that's why it's not unforgivable and that's why it has that leeway of it can be forgivable but not all the time because it doesn't always turn out that way okay i think it is forgivable. what i think it's forgivable well if we're using this train of thought where the, the person who's committing suicide has lost all hope and we question whether they were a christian or not if they're not a christian if they're doing that that means they're not a christian or a true believer so, are they really saved? And that's the question. Does right. that, the guy that walks around, does he acknowledge God at all? <clears throat> I didn't hear him talk about God. I can't say that. I, I, I heard him say anything about God. That's the question you have to rise. Does the, he believe in a higher power? Mm -hmm. The chance is the odds. Yeah. How many of you have ever been depressed? Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't mean like clinically depressed. I mean like you just just having a a bad month and like I can't wait till this month is over. Just me? No? Yeah. No, sure. Like just like not super depressed, just like, like super. Like here, let, let me change the word. <laughs> super sad. Okay. How many of you been super sad? Yeah. Once a month. Once a month? <laughs> <laughs> talk to me. Okay, we need to talk to <laughs> Now, it's common to be, in, in a sense, depressed. Not clinically depressed, but depressed. But imagine being in that state of sadness consistently. And when light, your life just, it just sucks all the time. And the worst thing is like, and maybe like the interesting part is what happens if your life just sucks and you're a Christian? Like, what do you do? Right? And, and your hope is in you. Maybe you change. Or maybe there's other questions that come into play that if your life sucks and you're still a Christian, like, how is that possible? Because when we look at the Apostle Paul's life, it sucked. It sucked. He was in jail most of his ministry. He almost died so many times. I mean, it was just bad. So what happens with someone like him who, who that is a Christian, but his life just completely sucks all the time? Or like someone who claims to be a Christian, who has said to be a Christian, and his life is just crappy. And you ask God, like, what the heck happened? How many of us can actually suffer through it? 
Or how many of us would actually be able to will to will through it? I mean, it's just it, so many questions open up. I get it. Like, there's so many stuff that we can like debate and talk about, right? There's a couple of things we can do as Christians for people who are suffering through suicide or depression. One, things that you can notice that people might be suicidal, okay? People who tend to, <laughs> people who start talking about maybe going away, or people who start putting their things in order, people who start making wills, or people who start talking about being there completely lonely inside. These are all things that, that can show you that something's wrong. Okay, people who start saying, like, well, I wonder what would have happened if I wasn't here anymore. Right? These are things that we need to pay attention to. If someone starts talking about not being here anymore, like, they're going to go away, or what would happen if, you know, if, if, if they were just to not be present anymore. Um, I think the, not I think, I know that. The sides of people who, who are just not going through a good time, people who are having a very difficult time and are thinking about just disappearing tend to have the idea or at least contemplating the idea of suicide. People who have no hope or people who have speak of no hope, okay, that, this, these are indicators. But like the biggest thing we can do for suicide, people who are suicidal, the biggest thing for people who actually, there's there's groups, that, and in the Golden Gate Bridge, there's groups in Korea who, who handle this every day, who talk about it, who actually pull people out of jumping from the bridge. The one thing that they say, the one thing that has brought people back from not jumping, it's just one thing. It's listening. Listening. Listen to them. Listen to what they have to say. Because they feel alone. Because they feel like no one understands. Because there's no hope. So as Christians, as believers, as human beings, if we can listen to what it is they have to say, and two, if we offer hope in something better, we can change somebody's life. And sometimes we don't even know who is going through this. But we have to learn to listen before we speak. And we have to offer hope. Because those who don't believe in God have no hope. There is no hope for them. For we who believe, all of our hope, is in Jesus. Let's stand and pray.